Well, I went after that job because I read in the trades they were they were having they were turning the writing staff over. So I uh, contacted our contacted I spoke to our agent Shapiro and Lickman. They were sort of a new agent <clears throat> to try to get a job writing writing specials for for Hope and not going out and doing all the all the uh, personal appearances because Hope did at least 200 a year sometimes. It was a lot of work. <clears throat> so we just got hired to do that, Ex except that the, the uh, when, during the negotiations, our, our agent said we weren't available because we were with George. So we took, took the negotiations out of their hands uh, and got a deal with Hope and didn't have to pay commission for the rest of our <laughs> the professional life. You negotiated without, without an agent. And well, while Hope may have a reputation for being tight, we got raises every time we asked for it. Not frequently, we got, our, got raises. And so we had no complaint about the money. What, what we all complained about was we never through writing. And every time we looked in the paper, there were some more monologue jokes to do. And when we said, Bob, this, this is too topical. By the time you get around to doing your show, it's not going to be on the show because we haven't got paid to do the show. So he conned us into saying that, that it wouldn't work. We couldn't turn him down. Was he looking for quite a bit of volume from his writers? Yeah. Yeah. Incredible the amount of jokes he got. Hundreds every show. And they're all in the files. I don't know if he's going to go to where they go. The Congress or what? He, uh, the, the writers called him Piggy because he always wanted more. And he called us once, let us know we're running behind the other writers. It was competitive a little bit that way in uh, quantity. How would you describe Bob as a talent, Bob Hope? As a talent? Uh, um, well, he's immense talent. He's funny. I can give you a couple instances of, of his humor. Uh, when Mac Miller was his press agent, the one who I had worked for in New York, uh, he was on the road with Hope. I, so let's say it was P Pittsburgh one Sunday, and Hope comes down the hotel lobby and sees Mac there. He says, why aren't you out at the press? He says, Bob, it's Sunday, they're not in. He says, what's wrong with door to door? <laughs> so I mentioned that <clears throat> to prove that he's funny because when I was at the Bistro Garden, Anyway, I was there with my wife, and on the way to the men's room, I passed Hope and his wife, and uh, Betty Ford. <clears throat> I said, don't worry, Bob, I'm going to go right home and work on the monologue. He says, no typewriters here? It's the same humor as the uh, door-to-door. -door. <clears throat> when I went to, uh, I don't travel much, but I landed in Beijing at 2.30 in the morning once, and... Uh, Jim Bacon, the author, columnist, was there. He didn't say hello. He said, Hope just called. He wants 10 great wall jokes by tomorrow noon. Why do you think he had such a longevity, or had, still has, I should say, still has such a longevity? Well, I think, like Jack Benny said about anybody on television, they have to like you. And I think Hope is universally liked, and he sure made, made a lot of friends when he entertained the troops. And I think they're still loyal to him. And also, if you know him, he's a, he's a very friendly, almost uh, childish in some uh, approaches, to very very naive about a lot of things. In business, he's, I think we, he said he was the first one to get a deal out of Paramount for part ownership of his movies. So he knows how to he knows how to cut it, but he is naive about a lot of things. And like I say, I think some of these stars who were from humble beginnings relate some of the uh, financial things to today, like very modest tipping.